sir? Oh, you know. How you doing, bro? Are you feeding some critters? I'm trying to. He's feeling a little picky today. Mm. The little dudes are getting big. Looking good. We gotta put some, gotta water everything. So I woke up, I woke up this morning and I was like, what the heck? I was like, did Richard poop in the house or something? Like, dude, just like, my nostrils were stinging first thing this morning. It was absolutely disgusting. Walked into the snake room. Dude, it smells like death. I don't know how. I mean, watch. It's only been two days. I was at Chandler's all day yesterday. And dude, those rats do my whole house. Smells like something, well, something did die. It's a hot stink. It's been dead. It's, it's disgusting. It's like, oh. So, we're gonna clean some cages. Make a little video before work. Get something out for you guys. I like these little spitters. We got some plans here for the snake room that we're gonna be doing really shortly. So I just wanted to get everything dialed in for that FWC inspection that we just had. And uh, now that that is over with, it's time to rearrange some things. Just because I wanted to make sure everything was like nice and labeled and for Eric to come and check everything. But now that he's done, inspected, everything is passed. He came in here, there was no issues at all. He came in here and he was like, hell yeah, dude, this place looks awesome. Everything was super legit. Uh, all my paperwork, everything. So thanks, Eric at FWC. Um, but now we're going to rearrange a bunch of things in here and make it more like cohesive and make it make sense. And then after I do that, we're gonna go through and we're gonna make setup videos for almost every species of snake that I have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of do like a basic care and setup for these snakes that I have and then see what we have for open cages. And then we're gonna see what we have for open and then I'm gonna start looking around for some new babies and tell me what you guys wanna see us get, if it's even obtainable things that you want to learn about so maybe there's some snakes that are hard to find you want to learn whatever it is comment down below let us hear what you have to say but what i have planned is this whole wall right here this whole black cage is what six cages all set up i want to take all the rattlesnakes except for batman and robin obviously my big guys they're going to stay down in their six foot vision as far as all the other rattlesnakes that are in here i want to have them all set up right here i think there's like five or six of them which will be perfect so we'll have all the easterns right here the central american that other little eastern that i have over here everything will be all in the same thing same thing with this the indians i want to get together not together in the same cage same thing spitters in one area you know what i mean i just wanted to like make a little bit more sense and try to organize this room here a little bit but enough talking and mumbo jumbo we need to feed shatid or we need to clean shatid's cage I haven't taken her out in a minute and you guys know she's real mean not real mean but like She's just crazy. She tries to bite me all the time. She's got a name for a reason. Yeah, exactly. We, her name is Queen Shatid for a reason. So uh, we're going to wait for Alex. So he's... Watch out for the... Uh, where you, you got both of them inside? Yeah. Dude, they're so freaking fast. Feeding the puff adders right now. Oh, you're right now, right now. Coiling up on each other right after I fed them across the cage from each other. Yeah. Woo! But uh, there's only two in here. That's the only reason I'm reaching my hand in there like this. Boom. Ooh, so fast. Oh, little death worms. Those things are freaking serious. All right, so let me uh, drop that right now, y'all. Let's go in here. I'm gonna uh, take these dead rats out first. They smell so bad. Holy crap. What the fuck? Holy crap. Oh, man. Dude, they're all fat, bloated. Freaking. Terrible, dude. All right, so we're gonna seal this up because that is god awful, man. Gross. All right, so let's take out little Shadid and see how she's doing. She's been eating great up until that last couple days. I don't know why. I uh, I don't know why she didn't eat last time. Thinking maybe she was in shed. <gasps> Look at that. See that? So the other day when I fed her. So it was two days ago. Yesterday we were at Chandler's. The day before that was in here. I fed her those couple, those couple rats, and uh, I didn't. She was in her hide box when I fed it to her, and I didn't really look to see if she was in a shed or anything. I just assumed that she wasn't. And uh, look at that. She didn't eat the rats. So I thought that there was something weird about that. I was like, what the heck? I was like, why did she eat those things? But there we go. That explains it right 
There, so no need to take her out because she is in shed. She can barely see when, uh, which is, I don't know if you guys have watched my snake bite video back in the day when I got bit by the King Cobra, but Naga was also a little bit in shed. We weren't aware of it at the, at the time. And uh, yeah, so that kind of like, she didn't really know. When snakes can't see very well, or they feel threatened or anything. So imagine you can't see anything because you're in shed and something starts messing with you. Your automatic response isn't gonna be like natural. You're not gonna wanna behave yourself. You're gonna kind of freak out because you can't really see what's going on. So even if you do have a nice snake or a somewhat tamed venomous animal, if they're in shed and they can't see properly, they're not gonna know what is going on, which is gonna, it's gonna heighten all their other senses. And so they'll be more prone to when they're in shed, you touch them like this, they're like, oh, what the hell is that that just touched me? And then they come flying back around, freaking out, because they just can't see anything and they don't know what's going on. So that is the whole reason for that. But I'll just see how, see how Rusty's doing today. Looking good, dude. He's also probably going to go and shed here pretty soon. He's looking a little bit on the, a little bit on the opaque side. Not too, not too cloudy, but definitely not as bright as he normally is. Oh man, no sir. Oh, you're such a good snake. He's got some poop on his head or something. Oh no, yeah, you can see, actually, the top of his head. You can even see some scales. Look, come here. Sir, look, you can see he's got kind of some loose scales on the top of his head right there. So he's definitely about to go into shed soon. He'll probably be in that opaque face in a few days. It's weird how like a lot of, uh, a lot of the snakes here shed at the same time. And it's mainly because a lot of them are on somewhat of the same feeding schedule according to size. So like my bigger snakes, they eat like maybe once every two weeks, once every once every 10 days, once every two weeks. And then all my smaller stuff, excuse me, sir, can you put your head in the cage? And then all my smaller snakes, try to feed them like once a week, maybe less, depending. Especially Shatid. Shatid, I've been feeding, I've been giving her two rats. Uh, yeah, two rats, probably like once every like eight days or something like that. So hopefully she will be growing fast. I gotta talk to my buddy Kevin and see if he has any babies. And also my buddy Tim that I get all my rats from, he said he's got a bunch of baby Burmese pythons for me also. So hopefully he has a lot of them. And then we can start slowly, um, slowly weaning her, not completely off of rats because I'll still like to feed her a rat every now and then. If I can keep her on both, that'd be great. But like my main goal with her is to be to switch her back to snakes. Since we are in Florida, we have pythons. We're never running out of pythons. Let me tell you what, like we could be hunting pythons for the rest of Florida's history and they're probably still gonna be here because there's just, they're everywhere. Their clutches are huge. They're prime apex predators. So they're they're all, they're here to stay. So lucky for me, live in South Florida, we can go just catch Burmese pythons all the time. So I'll have food for them for their whole lives. So there's no reason to feed them a rat that is lacking some of the key nutrients that king cobras need to survive in the wild there is i'm in south florida we're feeding them snakes all right so let's see what else we got going on here we're gonna spray these cages down but before i do that we're gonna spray these cages down but before i do that i just want to go in here because normally this mang shan is hiding in that back corner so you can't really ever see this is the boy. So let me uh, go ahead and get a little safer here. Cause these things are freaking nuts, dude. I feel like every time we take these guys out and film with them, they're just so freaking springy, dude. And this one is really cool too. Cause you can see in the top of his head, that pattern, it's almost like a little skull skull or like a like a mask face or something like that you see that it's like two eyes and nose it's a little sinister -y looking but dude these guys are just so insanely cool beautiful beautiful animal though so cool all right so let's get you back in your cage thank you safely close it ah, all right dope
We're not gonna make a video cleaning a million cages because who wants to see that? Not me. So what we're gonna do is clean the worst cage here. The, the cages are pretty clean for the most part, but this cage in particular, see how freaking, you see all that? Did you see how fast that was? He was in the back of the cage, came flying out forwards. That's what these zebra spitters do. That's just their temperament. That's just how they act. It's crazy. Like not a whole lot of the other snakes come flying out of the cage like that, especially when they feed, they come flying straight out of the freaking cage. And not only that, but they also like to stick, when they poop, they stick their tails straight up in the air and they freaking helicopter it all over the place. I don't know if it's like a territorial thing or they do that in the wild to like mark their... It's got, it's got to be something to do with that because it is just absolutely disgusting and they have to do it for a reason because they both do it. I literally watch them put their tails straight up in the air and they helicopter it around like a sprinkler. They are the most disgusting cobras to deal with. Not fun. Spitters are already a pain in the butt. That's why nobody likes keeping them. I'm not going to say nobody likes keeping them. Because obviously, your boy right here likes keeping spitters. But, then again, they kind of suck sometimes. Because they're freaking crazy. Look how fat their heads are, man. Like, the venom yield of this little snake is insane. Like, he's not a very big cobra. But just look how fat those venom glands on the sides of its head. Don't want to mess with that. And then this one, I don't know if you guys were watching the nematode video, but see, this one's got that little tiny cyst on the back of its neck. Now, Justin told me that I shouldn't worry about. It's definitely not a nematode or anything like that. Um, it's hard. It moves around. So uh, we're not really going to worry about that. We can deal with medicating them. So we're just going to get him or her in the can. Um, this is a sexed pair. I do not know which one is the male, which one is the female. I think we did. I have to go back and watch the video of when we first brought him here with uh, Ray, because I'm pretty sure Ray told me which one was which. One of them is darker than the other. So that is how you tell the difference. I want to say that the darker one is the female and the lighter one is the male. I'm not 100 on that though, so don't, uh, don't exactly trust it. They're so pretty though, like those bands on them. They are so fire, like in the better lighting. Ooh, so good. Very cool little snakes. Now, let's get to cleaning some poop here. Get this all situated, we'll clean the glass, give them some fresh water, scrub this bowl out, get this freaking mulch in here all situated, and we'll see you in just a second. Holy crap, dude! Yes, sir. That's why I love that snake. Whoa. Yeah. That. You don't want to step on that and walk through the African bush. Nar. Holy crap. Talk about fast. Yeah. Dude. That was. I don't want to be on the business end of that. No, sir. All right, let's put these spitters back. And then I got to get to work. I got to do a bunch of things today. I got to finish working on this merch for you guys because that's going to be sick. Hopefully, I ordered some samples. Even though I changed a couple things yesterday. So uh, we're going to have the OG original ones that aren't changed. You guys online are getting the other ones, which are even cooler. But still. <laughs> I really can't wait to announce them because they are going to... They're my, personally my favorite ones. They're freaking sick. And I feel like they're going to be a big hit with you guys. And we have another, oh, that's another thing I have to do today. I have to sign a release form or something. Because we also have some other things in the work that I can't really talk about right now. That has to do with the merch we're dropping. And it's going to be real freaking cool. So we're just going to put these little zebras in there like that. They went in so nicely, right? It's like, oh, you guys are so sweet now. That is it. The room doesn't smell bad anymore. My house, I'm gonna light some candles. Get rid of this death smell. It was terrible, dude. Woke up in the house. I don't know whoever keeps, I'm sure a lot of you keep animals in here. When you do feed your animals, you, know, you gotta make sure they eat right away. Cause if you let things go for a couple days like I did, I was at Chandler's all day yesterday and get it come in here. It didn't smell in here last night. Woke up this morning and it was like something was dead in my room. It was, I wanted to throw up. So make sure you check your cages after, especially if you're feeding dead stuff, because it'll get real sticky. That is it, guys. 
cleaned all the cages. Everything's pretty spot on. Everybody's got waters sprayed everything. That is it. I gotta go to work. Make sure Tyler on tattoos.com. Get all your merch. Well, anyways, we got a bunch of cool stuff in the works. It's gonna be sick. It's gonna be an exciting Bye -bye. 2022. Appreciate it. We're gonna be revamping a lot of stuff here. So yeah. It's gonna be real cool. Hey, Frosty, stop trying to break out the cage. All right, I'm off to work, guys. Thanks for watching. Till next time. I swear they never really understand me. I need a comma like I need a Grammy. She needs the flow with her designer panties. Yeah, we eatin' panties, check the pantry from the sound waves to the rebel lines from the tattered bridges to expensive dishes. Now we eating ends with these new beginnings. Yet the sign a major for the bank roll, but thank the Lord that it dies at penitentiary. Nice guy, but my inside is empty. Mighty flashy with a bird's eye. Scribble gems to get my pockets lined till I get arthritis. Wish my heart is icy, walking past the bouncer like I knew somebody. Queen like Kelly Cloudy or the poison ivy. If I'm like a stroller with a coast sign, me I don't even like me. No, I'm staring in the mirror, indifferent. Who is this nigga? He claimed me the realest to shy, but Timmy the riddle.